All right, what's up? This is uh, going to be a part two video. Answer a few questions. People hit me up, email, and uh, hit me through Instagram, uh, asking a couple questions about the swing arm stuff. So the other video seemed like it worked, so I'm just going to do another video. I didn't really move forward on the project at all. Didn't really do any work since the other video. Just just more to answer questions. So I'm gonna come over here. Um. I think it was a dude out west and northwest somewhere was asking about the pivot bolt stuff. So this transmission's 03. It's got a three-quarter pivot bolt, and it's got the bigger swing arm with the one-inch axle. Previous to this, it's got a smaller swing arm, kind of looks like an FXR swing arm, except it's got the mount in the back and a three-quarter axle with a regular nut. <clears throat> you can mismatch this stuff, but if you want to run an FXR swing arm, you might as well just get a pre-02 swing arm, uh, 02 transmission, because it has the bolt that goes through the pivot area on the back of the transmission, the hole is 5 eighths, that hole is 3 quarter. <clears throat> I know somebody that didn't even realize that, and, uh, you know, whatever, had a little bit of a wobble situation, we'll say. Uh, you can mismatch this, if you want, and you got an early tranny, let's say you got the earlier drivetrain, the smaller hole, you can run this. You can just change this stuff and miss and match it. Uh, that's another thing. You know, dudes will hit me up. Yo, you know, they make a pan for the transmission. And uh, you say something about build swing arm? Cuz, check it out. I know all about that stuff. Um, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to use Harley parts. Trying to build this cheap and easy. Like, uh, I feel like majority of other people. You know, some of these people are building these bikes. It's getting out of hand. You know, if I had money like that, I wouldn't be building an FXR. I'd be building a spaceship. So, uh, you know, you don't need the pan, exactly like I was saying, you could get rid of that, all that type of stuff. Now, the cross member, that was another thing somebody asked about. You really don't even need it, to tell you the truth. Um, you don't got to search it down, you don't got to get it, you really want one. I explained the other video, one of the many ways you can get it, but you don't need it. Dressers don't have it. If you look underneath a bagger, they never had anything there. Uh, you could just make two blocks, weld them on each side, and run Dyna stuff and be done with it. You don't even have to make a cross member. Baggers don't have them. Guys are putting over 200 horsepower motors and baggers and ripping down the track every day. There's nothing there. Um, kickstand, where you're going to put your kickstand, there's a couple options. Um, they make a kickstand that bolts over this clevis block piece. The only problem with that is if the bike's tall, it's going to lean because they're not that long. You can make it longer, obviously. That, that's one option. You could do a weld-on kickstand like a chopper, the Sportster style, with the cast uh, clevis piece that you weld on, and you just use a Sportster kickstand. Uh, a couple other people make a mount that bolts to this two-bolt pattern that converts to the three-bolt pattern, so you can run a big twin kickstand, pan head, shovel head, big twin style. That's also another option. That's good if it's tall, because you, you, know, you could put the long pan head type kickstand on it. Um, and you can get that stuff. You're not, you know, you're not welding something to the frame, whatever. Uh, the other thing is, nobody asks about this, but I figure I'll just, you know, let this ball roll. This is tight. You see what's going on up there? Um, there's a couple things you could do here. This is pretty wide. Some people grind it down and make it narrower to bring the shock in up there. This is also threaded, so, so you can drill this out. This is a three-quarter, uh, excuse me, half-inch coarse thread bolt. You could drill it out like a regular tab on a swing arm and move the shock in a little bit and then just put a nut on the backside, which will bring this in. I usually just leave it. It's threaded. It's nice. It's already done. One less thing you got to do. I always get rid of these, though. I, uh, I just drill them from the backside, cut them off, drill them from the backside, get rid of them, and then just rip. Uh, replace that with a bolt so it's just a steel tube through the frame like this and then you just put a bolt this is 3 8 up here this is half inch uh, lots of shocks come like that and lots of shocks actually come half inch upper and lower so if you get a set of shocks they'll have a reducer sleeve to put in the top here to drop it down to 3 8 with, with 3 8 which on the one side usually has a little shoulder so that's going to be uh, a spacer already and then you could just put another spacer 
That's what I have on my stretched Evo uh, FXR that I run an FLT, Evo FLT tranny, and I run the O2 and up swing arm, which is the same thing I was saying is how you can mismatch it. The transmission I have in that bike is an Evo style FLT with the pan out of a 95 or 6, the holes 5 8 but I ran this type swing arm. So what I did was I just drilled the back of the transmission out to three quarter and then put all this stock Harley stuff in and it worked fine. Bike's got, I don't know, hundred and something thousand miles on it. So uh, I think that answers all the questions with the cross member swing arm stuff. Uh, remember, you can just look up part numbers. Go on one of the websites that has a fiche, look up part numbers. You'll see when they change, you know, that's, that's what I do sometimes. I'm not sure what's what. All right. I hope this answers a few questions and uh, helps a few people out. All right. Later, my dudes.